Hello, this is Greg Allison with Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm, coming to you with the eighth grow day in a series of pea shoots and sun shoots. I'm going to break the monotony today. It seems I've um, lost, uh, actually probably erased the uh, video I shot for grow day eight on the pea shoots. However, I do have video of the pea shoots under the lights in the racks because I uncovered them on grow day eight. And that's a key feature on the grow day eight anyway. You would have seen the normal watering routine, which would have been the same routine you've seen on each of the previous grow days. And maybe that was getting a bit monotonous. So from here out, the, the, the uh, grow days change in tempo a little bit because it's different when it's underneath the uh, uh, lights. I'm not gonna be beating on the pump every day. It's gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna see them grow and you're gonna see them progress and you'll see some things will be different. So I'm gonna show you today a little different things. I'm going to show you the uh, pea shoots. I'm going to show you sun shoots. And I'm going to show you for day eight. You're going to see mustard for day seven. And you're going to see uh, uh, some other greens I was growing on day six of their grow day, all on the same calendar day. And this was all shot over a month ago. And uh, I will have a series also on growing the pea shoots. Now, there are 13 installments minus the one I just lost on the uh, sun shoots, excuse me, on the pea shoots, and the equivalent number on sunflower shoots. So, and I always get mixed up and call sun, pea, and pea, sun, so for some reason. Uh, but in my worst to call sun, pea, but that's another matter. So, the key thing is, there are a number of videos in these series. The sun shoot videos are a lot more involved. They're usually two parts, and I've got to edit them together. Uh, so there's more content in those videos because a little bit more to do and it's a different routine. Uh, for my other subscribers who uh, come along for prepping, it looks like I've lost a fair number uh, from this series. I mean, like maybe up to 100. A net loss total of something on the order of maybe 70 people. Uh, however, I get very few negative comments. Uh, I've got one recently, and I actually appreciate that because I'm gonna try to respond to you and find out uh, a little bit more detail about <clears throat> just what you expect and what you would like to see. Uh, so if you, if, if you really wanna talk to me, go ahead and do that. And I've got some email from some other people about the videos I shoot outdoors. <clears throat> and I do plan to respond to all you people. Right now, I'm, I'm kind of uh, covered up. I'm planning to get around to this, and apologies for being slow on it. I am extremely a busy guy. However, the uh, sun shoot will follow the pea shoots, and uh, I'm getting a lot of rave comments in support of this series, far more than the other, and I'm getting a lot of good thumbs up. So my going intake is that the net effect is it's positive. And I must add that if you want to prep, as I've said in some of the other videos, if you really intended to be a prepper to survive the grid down or other catastrophes that may come upon us, other uh, hits the fan situations, I'm gonna tell you something. You can store food all you want. You can bug in, bug out, whatever, and I'm gonna go into that. I've actually just shot a video, and I've got to edit it all together uh, over this past weekend on uh, water. How, and you're gonna like that when you preppers. Everyone should like that because water is a key thing. But in terms of food storage, you know, you can lose that. It's easy to lose the food storages. You might get robbed. I mean, can you sit at home on top of them all day? Are you gonna have armed guards at your house all day? Uh, how big a horde can you fight off when they're in the motorcycle gangs? This may be why you have to bug out. And if you got to bug out, you can only take so much stuff with you. Seed are easier to transport if you have to bug out. You know, a few packs of seed in the pack, uh, or you may gather them elsewhere. You're gonna to have to know how to forage and you're gonna to have to know how to grow your own because even if you're saving it up, they say if we have a uh, problem with climate like the grand solar minimum, uh, which it actually gets colder or whatever you might wanna assume we may have in terms of catastrophes, uh, you may find yourself in a situation where you're gonna to have to grow your own food. Things may not come back online in two or three years. You're not gonna be able to go to the grocery store. You're not gonna be able to go to, uh, your supplies are gonna run out. You're not gonna be able to go to um, uh, buy fertilizer. You're gonna to have to know how to make your own. I, I get that with the worm farm stuff I'm gonna be covering. So if you watch these videos, you're gonna learn things that's gonna help you grow and survive and thrive in these bad situations. And in the good situations, you will eat healthier and if you pay attention, 
uh, you can figure out how you can make a living doing some of these things. You can actually make money or a little money on the side, a little change. So we're going to go on this. I hope you find it positive. Uh, you know, some people won't like it if I quit this stuff. I think more people fall in that category than fall in the category that if I keep doing this. Now, yeah, I had a guy tell me I was relentless putting this stuff out. I mean, apologies. Uh, you know, I, I hope you will find good content in the other videos I'm, I'm putting out that you subscribe for originally. That stuff is still coming out. There's going to be a lot of uh, videos about prepping, about survival, about the situations we may face, including power grid that's going to be continuing we have a lot more stuff to cover in there so in any event i hope that you can appreciate what we're doing here this is for your good because this is the things you need to know to prepare for the things that why you need to prepare and what it can do for you and growing your own food being able to, to purify and sanitize your water being able to forge in the wild these are critical steps and i hope that you will learn, uh, appreciate what i'm trying to do anyway I'm rambling too much, so forgive me, please. Uh, so please stay subscribed. If, if you're just coming to this, subscribe, because there's going to be a lot of interesting videos here. Bang the update notification bell. Uh, a lot more to come. And I did have, I still found uh, the pea shoot, uh, no, excuse me, the sunflower shoot video for that grow day, but somehow the, the regular grow day eight video on the, the pea shoots is missing. I, I filmed it, but you still get in view of what... Okay, this is the uh, microgreens growing in the uh, racks under the lights. This particular rack I've set up with uh, two light systems. Each one holds two bulbs. I'm using the T12 uh, daylight bulbs. And so um, there's four of them so that you don't just have the greens growing in the center of the, of the rack. Sometimes that's what happens when you just have one uh, like I've got up here now where the racks are higher up it don't matter as much when they're in close this is what you need so on these uh, sunflower shoots and on these uh, pea shoots they're both at grow day 8 I put them in here uh, to, to expand on this light now these mustard shoots they are on grow day 7 and normally at that height, I would not put them under this light. But since we're having some issue here in the center, I decided to put them under a light anyway. We'll see how this grows along. Stay tuned. Just remember to bang the bell for update notifications. And uh, But first, you must subscribe. Hey, Conradish. This is Grow Day 6. Look at how that stuff is growing. Uh, for the broccoli... Row A6, that is great. Uh, that's just the way it goes. The radish goes like crazy. And the kale is really kind of down in here. It's also at row A6. I haven't covered these things because I think they will progress some. And red amaranth, row A6. And here's some red amaranth that's uh, yeah, a little over a month old. It's just something I'm uh, seeing what it's going to do. That is definitely beyond the scale of macro greens. I mean, that's almost transplantable now. <laughs>